What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Um, today we are. Uh, today we are. <laughs> Anyway, today we are um going to uh oh yep that's it Gettysburg Ghost Tour. Um, some of you same with me. You some of you have been to like Gettysburg. Maybe some of you might have been to Gettysburg. I also have. Um, that was really fun. It was a couple years ago actually, but this is like different. Obviously, Gettysburg Ghost Tour. Some of you guys might have been on the Ghost Tour. I don't know how long it's been around. But, um, might have been around since Gettysburg, which was forever ago. But, anyway. Yeah, uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. If you guys see anything in the video, please tell me. Um, because I'm not gonna be able to, like, be looking, like, straight at the camera the whole time. So, if you see any, like, weird stuff happening or hear anything, comment in the video if I don't hear it. But yeah, um, it's going to be a lot of fun. So see you when we get there, or in the car going there. I died. No, oh, I charged it. I had no time. What is up, guys? We are in the car and now. I charged it. it had, I had no time to charge it. We were leaving in five minutes, and it only had 20%. Anyway, we are in the car now, and we're go we're heading up to Pennsylvania, to Gettysburg, I and yeah. I'm going to be mad. I got the Cinderella. Okay. She looks creepy. Look at her face. Yeah, I know. Anyway, I got Carly with me. Creepy Cinderella. Okay, anyway, I have Carly with me. And... and Jasmine. Okay. Hey. Oh, my what phone. Anyway, I'll see you guys when we get up there and start the ghost tour. But yeah, I I forgot I, I forgot to put my shoes on. Like so that, I'm barefooted yeah, and like what I got doing? my shoes. So yeah. Hey. Look, How did you meet Gettysburg, Tom? boy. Look at all that. When? when did you meet you today? Look at all that, man. Why would you have that? I don't know. That's, That's all, all Gettysburg. Gettysburg. Sorry if it's a little loud. Okay, yeah, I'll see you guys when we actually park because it's getting a little loud. Oh, I get it because I like it. Get a shot of what? The 19 something Gettysburg's in. I can't get Boom. Can <laughs> <What? laughs> I take the picture, guys? Guys, don't drive yet. I'm not driving, girl. Get it, girl. Get don't it. have my phone. Well, we might have to drive in a minute. I'm taking a um a film. Oh, oh hello. Don't get my side view. I'm recording yeah, you, me kids. Either. You always get me. They got friends. a picture. 1870. 1870. 1863. You got my shot, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Gettysburg. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Boom. We made it in the shore. Oh, look at these eagles. Oh no, they don't, Leo. Wait, what? Never mind. Look at this door. Oh no. Oh no. What? Oh, those are cool. Oh, those are mood rings. Those are cool. Look at these. Don't know how you hold them. Look at all these cool things. It's like a little, like, tinker toy shop. See, this is the logo. Look at that. It's going to be on ground young men have fought and died over. It's very hard to do any of the stories that didn't. They make little sense anyway. <clears throat> well, on these walks, a lot of the buildings you're going to see around you were just not here in 1863. Gettysburg has grown a lot since then. I will point out the ones that were. One thing I have learned from over 30 years I've been doing these tours, some of the scariest things in this town are not always the ghosts. A lot of times, it is the people driving. <laughs> I have been struck twice crossing roads with a lantern in my hand. Oh, not kidding about that. People do not watch where they're going. We go to cross the street, please let me go first, see if I can get them to yield to us. If they do, I'll ask you to cross then. 
If they don't, well, your tour might be over, but at least you witnessed a ghost story. <laughs> Keep filling it. If you have questions during the tour, please feel speak right up. Just let me get through my story anyway. <laughs> because I know some people are shy about asking questions. I'm afraid of sounding silly. And you should. A wise man once told me the only stupid questions in life are usually the ones that went unasked. But I have found there are exceptions to that rule. The gentleman asked me on one of my tours, why did they always fight the battles on national park land? <laughs> I laughed at this man. I thought he was having fun with me. I quickly found out it was my embarrassment. He wasn't. So, ask any question you want. I will try to answer it. If I can. With that, the only thing I need to do is Why? take those stick of stuff, so I just need the small gray section of it. Hold on to that larger. I'm hiding it. It's called the Wagon Hotel. A two-story wood frame building. They had rooms to rent out to the travelers and a small tavern and a reputation of the worst food in town. You can see not much has changed since then. <laughs> but Union soldiers kept up a steady and deadly fire from the upstairs windows uh, onto the Confederate lines. And it was such a deadly, accurate fire. Lieutenant A.J. Jackson of the 9th of Louisiana said he could not hang his hat out door nor window without getting three holes in it. This forced the Confederates into doing something that has brought some people a little strife over the years. The Confederate soldiers started breaking holes in the walls of all the exterior walls of the houses up and down Baltimore Street so they can go up and down the street without ever stepping out onto it. People living in those houses say at times and they're sitting around watching Wheel of Fortune, eating dinner, whatever, feel a sudden breeze and at times and an uninvited guest cruising through. One of my favorite stories told to me a woman by the name of Donna and her husband Buzz. They had lived in their house for about 17 years never really experienced anything. They weren't believers. But Don and Buzz said that Don had complained about every last one of those 17 years about the size of their bathroom. It was a Civil War building. It said the shower stall was about the size of a phone booth. For the upcoming 20th anniversary, Buzz gave Don a blank check, said put in the bathroom you've always wanted. And that was a mistake. Because Putting in the bathroom, bigger bathroom, and moving walls, losing a bedroom. And one of Donna's big stipulations to the contractor, it all had to be ready for the upcoming anniversary. They just did manage it, even with all of Donna's changes. And she put a bathroom big enough for about five or six people. She went nuts. She had the whole rainwater thing coming down, steam, heating lamps. The guy even talked her into some new type of glass, evidently, that you could dial up and down the privacy end of it. Buzz complained about the price of it. Donna was actually enjoying her first shower in her new, her, in her new shower, day of their anniversary. And she was in there playing with all the gadgets. She was waiting for Buzz to get home. He was a commercial airline pilot. She was fretting because he was often late and had any reservations. And she was relieved when she looked out from the shower in their bedroom, and saw Buzz standing out there, and his cap on. He always looked dashing in his uniform, she thought. She was a, just sort of gushing about their new bathroom. And she also teasing him, she said, we have it a little over an hour before our reservations. Won't you grab a drink or join me? We got she was just going on and on about all the sweet, neat stuff in the bathroom. When she got done, walked out into the bedroom, she noticed that Buzz's flight bag wasn't wearing normally through it, nor his car key. She said she secretly was hoping he had another surprise little anniversary gift for her he'd sneak in. But that's when her phone rang. It was Buzz. Weather had delayed him. He was going to be two hours late. She said they must have stirred up something during the construction. She's often there alone, buzzes out on traveling around. 
she takes a lot better than I would. She said it doesn't bother me much at all. At my age, if they want to look, let them. <laughs> Buzz, he doesn't complain about the cost of that privacy tent anymore. He doesn't care to have company when he's in the shower. Nobody <laughs> knows. Folks, I don't have any idea if you guys believe in the paranormal or not. I don't care, really. I really don't care if you believe one word that comes out of my mouth tonight. There's one thing I know for certain. None of us are getting out of this alive. We're all gonna find out what the truth is in the end. And I do mean life, not the door itself, so don't get me wrong there. <laughs> but if you stay around this town long enough, eventually you'll have what we like to call the Gettysburg Experience. Something that will happen that changes your mind about what is possible and not possible in this world. Tonight or during the tour or later after you get wherever you're heading. I just hope it doesn't cause you too much strife. <laughs> just been leaning. It ricocheted off the headboard, wall, ceiling. Landed right back on the bed next to George and the baby. Jenny's mother found that still warm, bu warm bullet lying there, showed it to Jenny. Jenny blanched. Immediately said the 25th Psalms, her favorite, favorite Bible passage, and said something rather odd to her mother. She told her mother, if anyone's to die in this house, I do hope it is me, for Georgia has that little baby to look after. Be careful what you wish for. The following morning, about nine o'clock, a bullet tore through the side door of that house. Went through that outer door, another inner door that led into the kitchen. Jenny was in there kneading bread dough. It caught her on her left shoulder blade, pierced her lung, her heart. It finally ended his journey, caught up on one of the stays in the front of her gown. She was dead before her, her face hit the bread dough. The soldiers outside heard the Wade family keening in there. Large yard or courtyard to play under Mrs. Carmichael, not so much under Mrs. Carmichael, though. But even though she did have some fun activities for the children. I was up here earlier this spring. In the large group I had that time was a family of five, mother, father, and three little girls. They were stair steps. They were like 12. <clears throat> nine and seven, something right along here. Just beep, beep, beep. And I think the parents have been force feeding them Mountain Dew and sugar all day long. Because they were just, <laughs> just, they were fascinated by my can lantern. Couldn't believe the actual flame in it. But they've been walking lockstep with me the whole tour, machine gunning questions at me. <coughs> but when I came down the gravel path, I didn't tell you guys we were coming in the backyard. Didn't let them know either. I was shocked when they ran ahead and ran right in the yard. So are their parents. Don't go in that yard. They chastised their children for running ahead, told them to stay closer. And even though they've been chastised about it, as I started talking, they left their parents' side, walked right over here. They stood in a circle holding hands. They started walking in a circle, singing Ring Around the Rosie. But their eyes were flat, unfocused, singing rather much. And your sleep goes undisturbed this evening. Thank you for coming. Please come again. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey guys, what's up? Um, this is kind of the ending of the video. So, um, see you in the next one. Uh, I mean, I guess this is like a very short ending, but anyway. So yeah, see you in the next one. It was really fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And remember, if you hear, if you heard or saw anything. Please type in the comments, but I thought it was like really weird how he was talking about the phone on the first clip and somebody's phone rang. I thought that was really weird. But yeah, so see you in the next one. Bye!